All right, so before I show you on how I make this epoxy table, just a quick word on the sponsor of this video, which is Skillshare. Let's go. Skillshare is an amazing opportunity for those that are creative. Press their creativity. If you don't know what Skillshare is, you are missing out. They have so many different types of creativity outlooks that you can dive right into from animation, design, illustration, lifestyle, photo film, writing, and business, plus plenty of others. What I love about Skillshare is they dive into the business aspect of creativity. For those that want to be more productive, they even have courses to teach you building habits that will last. For example, Thomas Frank has a course titled exactly that. That is just one of many different types of courses out there. What about those who want to get into maybe blogging or photography? You could take your creative writing class with Roxanne Gay and learn a lot about blogging or maybe any one of the many photography co courses go from mirrorless, from DSLR. The possibilities are endless. So go check out Skillshare by clicking the link below. Get your free trial, and then after the free trial, it is less than $10 a month for a premium membership. So I'm out here in my shop, and I'm gonna get a little bit of work done. Uh, I'm actually getting ready to move. And I guess this video is about how I do those river tables. I got a piece of three quarter inch bamboo that I am leaning on right now. It, it's, it's a remaining scrap piece that I had left over, approached recently by a friend of mine from uh, Off Grid Solutions, Jason and he was looking for a bamboo piece of uh, plywood to do a type of river table. It's not gonna be actual river. And I guess this video is gonna be showing how I actually do that. Before I get started on that, I kind of wanted to just say that since I sold my second van, I know I've been bouncing around a lot. I built out this overlanding rig. Uh, I am still very much involved in the van life community as well as the tiny home community. Uh, I hope to do more things with the tiny home community. I don't know if I'll ever start my own, you know, compound. I'd like to, but I, you know, finances is, is a real thing and I don't have a lot of money. So trying to do it on everything on a budget, it just, it's all going to take time is my point. Really not what I'm trying to say here. What I'm trying to say, my channel is way more than just van life. My channel is about life. That's what always my goal was. My goal for this channel, and since maybe like 2012, now I didn't put my first video out until 2018, but I had a dream and a goal back in 2012 to start a YouTube channel. And for years, for years, I wanted to do a YouTube channel that would inspire people and motivate them and get them excited about whatever the, they wanted to be excited about. Now, maybe that's van life, maybe that's living tiny, but maybe it's also just being a doctor or being a lawyer or an architect or designing or an artist or an actor or a comedian or it does not matter. My point to this channel and just my own thoughts is I want to just inspire you to do whatever is in your head that you want to do. This is coming from a person that followed society for years. I went to college because it was the right thing to do. And I'm not telling you not to go to college. That's all I'm not here telling you. But if that's what you wanna go do, then go do it. If you don't wanna go to school and be an entrepreneur, then go be an entrepreneur. If you wanna start investing in the stock market and cryptocurrency, then go right ahead and go and do that. I'm not gonna teach you how to invest in stocks because guess what, I don't know how to do that. You know what my channel is about? Is to get you away from the craziness that's going on in your life. Inspire you to get to whatever you want to do. Years ago when I was acting, I wanted to do a YouTube channel and I wanted to do a segment in the YouTube channel, which I might actually bring back. And I wanted to call it duck on a pond because if you look at a duck on a pond, like clear secluded area, little ducky, you know, the duck just seems so cool and collective, right? On the surface, everything is cool, but underneath that water surface that you cannot see, those ducks feet are just flapping away. They're moving a mile a minute. So the metaphor here is everything on the surface, is calm and collective, but underneath the surface, you're moving a mile a minute. 
And I wanted to show people in life that I come across in that are ducks on ponds. What we see in the surface isn't what's really going on behind the scenes. You have no idea how much work an individual does. I'm not talking about just me, I'm talking about anybody at this point. I don't hire an editor for my videos, I do it all myself because I can't afford an editor. I can't afford an assistant. But nobody knows that kind of stuff about me. I'm not trying to preach this stuff about me. I'm not trying to say that. I'm just trying to say this channel has always been my name. 80%, 90% of my channel is going to be tiny living related, van life related, overlanding travel. Because those are the things that I'm passionate about and that I do well. Woodworking, that kind of stuff. I have another channel for my comedy stuff that I haven't even, I haven't, done enough in, but I want to do it. I'm passionate about that. You know, I had an email the other day and they, uh, it was a wonderful woman, I believe. And she asked me how I could be, how, how she could be featured on my channel. I don't know how to answer that. Nobody pays me to be featured on my channel. That's actually, it's against rules. Technically how you get featured on my channel is meet me. I don't care about the look of your van. I don't care about your design. I don't care about that. I care about your personality. Because your personality shines through on what your design and your living is like. And if you're kind to others, and if you're an amazing person, and you're doing great things, I'm gonna share that. I just ranted for like several minutes there, and I, I, I sorry, not sorry, but let's get to this table, and let's build this for Jason today. He is another good dude. Anyways, I made this table, it's dusty as all heck, but I made this table a little uh, a little while ago and I still gotta clean it up and such. I don't really like, eh, it's not bad actually, but I mixed a bunch of colors together, I don't know why. But I carved out the river, I made my own river. So what I'm gonna do here on this table is I'm going to spend the next several minutes doing some uh, measurements and uh, also figuring out, he wants it like a checkerboard, but there's gonna be like, it's gonna be three inch by three inch or you know two inch by two inch like checkers and there's gonna be a, a gap and the lines are gonna be filled in with epoxy. It's gonna be a dark color epoxy, probably like a black or maybe a, a gunmetal gray or something like that. So uh, I'm gonna do that for him because he has plaid inside of his van. So let's do, let's show that off and let's see how I do it. This is a three quarter inch piece of bamboo. The reason I'm carving it out is because it's gonna be on a lagoon mount. I wanted to make sure we use at least a three quarter inch thick. It's still gonna be strong enough, but I don't wanna go all the way through the wood because that's not gonna be strong enough. I know this because I slammed my fist down on a table once and I broke it it was an epoxy table. A long story about that one. Okay. So this one, I'm carving it in with a router. I'm gonna be using that hand router right over there. And I'm gonna be using this track to route this. It's going to be kind of a pain because I've actually never done like straight lines with a router, but let's find out. Let's see how it works. <laughs> Wow, the lighting is pretty terrible. Well, not terrible, it's just, you know, nighttime and this is when I decide to pour epoxy. So I've got all my epoxy right down there. This is the table that I'll be, uh, that you saw the time lapse of me cutting it out. Now I'm going to use this, like I think they call it tuck tape, but I call it Tyvek tape because I think that's how it's spelled, T-Y-V-E-K, but it's tuck, I guess. It's like house sheathing tape. Also, if you can see behind me, my place is an absolute disaster zone because uh, I'm getting ready to move. I'm moving to Las Vegas in a couple weeks. Uh, actually, probably by the time this video is out, I will be pretty much on my way there. And earlier in the video, I talked about uh, chasing dreams and, and motivating you and getting out there. Well, that's one of the reasons why I'm actually going to Las Vegas. I'm going there to get back on that comedy stage. So I'm very, very excited and a little bit nervous because I've been off stage for a while. I will hopefully do this in the future when, when I have my own shop. I made this table. Uh, if you guys saw my Instagram or uh, TikToks, it's there. But like a container home with shop space that I can do my thing 
maybe build some tiny, maybe build some vans, maybe have like a maker space situation. That would be kind of cool. Electric vehicles, the whole nine. Anyways, I'm gonna wrap this entire thing with that, that tuck tape and then I'm gonna start mixing the epoxy. Jason from Off Grid, he wants it straight black. Just, you know, I'm gonna go through my colors. I've got a whole bunch of colors. Got a whole bunch of colors down here. Let's get it going. All right, so I am now back out in my garage space, and this is where the fun begins. Uh, this is the table. Uh, it is actually, the, the color came out really nice. I used, uh, I think if I mentioned it before, it's called the Black Onyx. The wood was actually had a, a like a bow to it, like a bow or whatever. And uh, the when the epoxy was settling, it actually was like, because of the bow was this way, the epoxy was actually settling on the two ends. Finally figured this out and I clamped it down and I was able to level it. Now, however, I don't have a planer that's this wide. And the reason I need something this wide is because the grain of the wood is going this direction. So you don't want to plane something or sand something against the grain, unless it's a finish sander, which is totally fine. But a belt sander, or a planer or a drum sander, you want to go with the plane or with the grain of the wood. I'm not going to time lapse this part of it because honestly, it's extremely boring and tedious and it just takes forever. So uh, I'm probably going to spend 60 to 90 minutes, so an hour to an hour and a half just sanding. And that's kind of annoying for all of you to watch. So I'm not going to do it to you. And then I'm going to take this, I'm going to put a round over bit on it and I'm going to just clean up the edges, clean up the sides, finish sand it all out, and then we'll put a finish coat. Again, Total Boat is what I uh, use for the epoxy as well as the finish sealer. And I asked uh, Jason what he wanted as the finish on it. He wanted a matte finish, uh, but people also do like using a, a gloss or semi-gloss, but I love the matte look. It's, uh, it's a little bit duller. It's not as like shiny, and that's what matte is or satin.